Okay. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Xin Shou Wong from CMU. Uh, this work called R2 and Rotational Rectification Network is done with Zhang Xuan Wu, Chris Kidani from CMU, and Ferris Bini from Volvo. Um, pedestrian detection is a very hot topic in computer vision over the past decade. Uh, given the input image, the goal is to detect the pedestrians or localize the pedestrians in the input images. And lots of work has been done in this area. Uh, this figure is a summary of the result on the Kodak data set by 2016. You can see that best entry at, at that time uh, can already achieve an average miss rate less than 10%, which is pretty good. Okay, now what if we rotate the input image and run the same, same detector? What do you think will happen? As you can see in the bottom row, even if the detector is exactly the same as before, and we just add a little bit angle to the input image, it needs to inferior detection performance. The key difference here is that the pedestrians are not operated anymore after the, the rotation. Here are some more random linear cases. When there are no bounding box, it means that the detector totally fails. So why is it interesting? Why do we need to study the arbitrary oriented pedestrian detection? Well, the truth is, uh, in the real world, there are lots of cases where the pedestrians are not upright. This is an image I took yesterday during the poster session. Obviously, people are not upright, but even if I did it intentionally, um, but what I'm trying to say is that there is a big chance to have an angled picture when we are using um, our mobile phones. So similar for the cameras on the drones, uh, same things happen when driving construction vehicles on the rugged road. And of course, the wearable cameras such as GoPro. So in all of these cases in the real world, the camera orientation can be very flexible to the ground. So in, in order to have an expected result in this figure, it's very straightforward to think about modeling the rotation invariance or equivariance in the network. Uh, most methods can be categorized into three families, rotating inputs, the filters, or changing the sampling grades. Obviously, data uh, augmentation is the most straightforward way to implement, and it belongs to the first category. But the main, dis uh, main disadvantage of this first family is that they often suffer from learning lots of redundant filters uh, with different angles, like especially in the known level layers. And we can instead rotate the filters instead of the input images or features, which however produces more intermediate action, uh, activation maps with different angles. So we can only have a few filters uh, due to memory issues. Usually people use four filters uh, with an interval of 90 degrees. So uh, a small rotation can be only approximated. And the third family is to change the sampling grid. And in this way, the rotation can be accurately modeled. Uh, this is usually a smarter way. And our proposed method called global polling pony or GP pony uh, actually belongs to this family as well. And this is a demo um, to show what kind of activations can be produced on the right by our GP pony and when we rotate the inputs on the left. The key observation here is that the uh, rotational changes in the inputs um, uh, is converted to transitional shifts in output activations, which can be easily recognized by higher level of layers because as we all know, the translation equivariance is naturally encoded in CNNs. The core idea of GP pony is actually very simple. We basically define the sampling grid in, in the polar coordinate instead of a rectangular one compared to the general pony layer. And the stride and curl size can be uh, defined in a similar spirit, but along radial and uh, angular axis. If you take the max from the um, sampled grid shown in the figure, you got the max GP pony layer. And the kernel size and stride can be defined in a very small value if you want to model a very small amount of rotation. So in order to uh, solve the oriented pedestrian detection, we propose the R2N, which is a light blue box shown in the figure. And R2N actually is uh, basically composed of a rotation estimation module, uh, the dark blue one, and the spatial transformer, the green one. And the detector in the yellow box can be any kind of general detection framework, such as fast rising. If you look at the rotation estimation module closely, it, uh, it, it kind of includes the GP pooling that uh, we use it inside to capture accurately the rotation and inputs. The estimated rotation is then passed through the transformer to rectify the image features such that the pedestrians are converted to upright. So we can easily detect that angled pedestrians. 
So here are some random uh, example results. You can get a much better bounding box here. Okay, some take home messages. Uh, GP pooling, uh, so if you want to model some rotation equivalence, just try GP pooling. And just counterpart of general pooling layers, if you have a task of detecting oriented objects, uh, you can also have a try with R2N. And if you think our work is interesting, just drop by our poster. Thanks. <laughs>